Hey everyone, here is another example demonstrating how we can find the slope of the tangent line to a curve at any point, x equals a, using both methods that we know so far. So our first method is using our formula, the slope of the tangent is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a, all divided by h. So when we use this formula here, we have to be really good at function notation, meaning we really need to understand what this is telling me to do, f of a plus h. So my reminder to you is a simpler example. If I were to ask you to find f of 3, I'm hoping you would tell me to plug 3 in for x. So 3 times 3 plus 2 over 3 as an example. So just remember that whatever is in the parentheses becomes your input in the function in place of x. So for our problem, we have to compute the limit as h approaches 0. Remember, you need to continue to write that each time until we actually do the direct substitution. So f of a plus h means we are plugging a plus h into our function everywhere we see an x. So that's going to be 3 times the quantity a plus h plus 2, all divided by a plus h. Then we're going to subtract f of a. f of a, we see that a is in the parentheses. That's my input. So I'm substituting a into the function. So that would be 3a plus 2, all divided by a. So at this point, we're back to evaluating a limit. We always start with direct substitution. Unfortunately, we cannot do direct substitution because we'd end up with a zero in the denominator. So we have to think of our different algebraic tools. And in this example, we see up top what I have in red and blue. These are fractions. So we need to add fractions, and we do that by getting a common denominator. So our least common denominator is going to be the quantity a plus h times a, which means we'll need to multiply this first fraction by a over a, and then the second fraction will need the quantity a plus h, so we multiply the top and the bottom by a plus h. So this is kind of the, the grubby algebra part of the question that sometimes People will just do the algebra part on a scratch piece of paper. That's up to you uh, because there is quite a bit of algebra here. We're going to have to distribute combined like terms and all of that loveliness. So here we're multiplying a by this entire quantity. So that's going to be a. I'm going to do the multiplication in just a second. So times 3 times a plus h plus 2. We're multiplying a by that whole thing and then minus. What I have in blue is going to have to get multiplied by what I have in green. So that's going to be 3a plus 2 divided by a plus h. And some of you will go ahead and distribute at this step and start that process. But I'm writing down every single step here for those of you who feel like you, you need it. Oops, and look what I just did there. Sorry, let's fix that. That's all over the common denominator, which was a times a plus h. Sorry about that. And then the whole thing is divided by the h. So this is the grubby algebra part. You're going to have to just go ahead and persevere here, distributing the 3 in. Uh, you'll have to go ahead and basically distribute the two quantities in blue. That would be foiling if you use the word foil. So let's just keep going here. Crank it out, as my high school teacher would have said. So if we distribute, we're going to have 3a plus 3h plus 2. And then here, be sure when you distribute the 3a plus 2 and the a plus h that you keep it all in parentheses because we will have to distribute this negative here in just a second. So we've got 3a times a is 3a squared. Outside is 3a times h. Inside is 2a. And then last is 2 times h, which is 2h. And I need a little more room, so let me scoot that over. 
So last was 2h. And again, that's all over the common denominator, a times a plus h. All right, more algebra. So distributing again, a times 3a is 3a squared. a times 3h is 3ah. And a times 2 is 2a. Then we've got to distribute this negative as well. So negative 3a squared minus 3ah minus 2a minus 2h. So we just really need to be careful that we're not making any silly computation mistakes here. And then that whole thing is all divided by h. Now notice I have left this denominator here that I'm highlighting in yellow, a times a plus h. I left it purposely factored because at some point in time, I'm going to do direct substitution. So I really don't need to distribute that, although you could. It's more work and you don't need to. So we're hoping that we have some terms subtract out, and we have a lot. Look at this. 3a squared subtracts out. 3ah subtracts out. 2a and 2a subtract out, which is fabulous. So really, we are left with the limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to skew it up a bit here. I have don't need a big, quite as large of a division sign. So let's try again. So if this is all over h, we really end up with just negative 2h and then over that common denominator, a times a plus h. And then that whole thing is divided by h. So here's where we are going to change our division into multiplying by the reciprocal. So if it helps you think of this as h over 1, that's what we're dividing by. So negative 2h over a times a plus h, then the division changes to multiplication and the reciprocal will be 1 over h. And as soon as you do that multiplication by the reciprocal, voila, we can see that these h's divide out, which is fabulous. So we get the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2 over a times a plus h. At this point, we can do direct substitution. Remember that you are substituting in 0 in place of h. So this is where we would drop the limit notation because we're evaluating the limit at this point. So negative 2 over a times a plus 0, which is going to leave us with negative 2 over a squared. Whew, we made it. So what this is, is a general formula for the slope of the tangent line to the original curve that we were given up here, f of x equals 3x plus 2 over x at any point. And then we can use this answer to determine the slope at x equals 1 by just substituting in 1. So the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1 would then be negative 2 divided by 1 squared, which is just negative 2. And if we wanted to verify this on a graph, we could certainly graph the original function on our calculator and then go to where x equals 1, go to that coordinate, and look at the slope of the tangent line. And we should have a negative slope at that point, since our slope was negative 2. Now, that is one method for determining the slope of the tangent. but we know there's a second method that is equally good. It's really up to you regarding which method you choose to use. So I'm going to show the second method now. The second method is utilizing the slope of the tangent, which is found finding the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Sometimes people feel like this one is a little bit less work, but it's really personal preference. So let's work through it and you decide. So f of x is just the original function, which was 3x plus 2 over x. Minus f of a means we're plugging a into that function. So that would be 3a plus 2 over 
a. That's all divided by x minus a. I'm going to scoot over so you can see better. So now we still try direct substitution, but if I substitute a in for x, I'm going to end up with a minus a, which would be 0 in the denominator, and that's why that will not work. So in the numerator, I see that we have fractions, so we're going to get a common denominator again, but this time our common denominator is just x times a. So I just have to multiply my first fraction by a over a and my second fraction by x over x. And that is usually the case. Look at this, you guys, how the algebra is a little bit cleaner here. It's not quite as messy because our common denominator is a little bit simpler. So if we multiply a times the quantity 3x plus 2, we have 3ax plus 2a. And then I'm going to have minus, so make sure you've got those parentheses. We'll go ahead and distribute that x in, which will give us 3ax plus 2x. And then this is all over the common denominator of x times a. So cranking through this algebra a little bit more, we are going to distribute the negative here in the numerator. So 3ax plus 2a minus 3ax minus 2x, all divided by that common denominator, which was x times a. Simplifying here, we're going to see that the 3axs subtract out. And if you are starting to see the pattern, you know, where we're, we're going to do this division because you have this complex fraction. So you're going to end up multiplying by the reciprocal. So if you're comfortable doing that at this step, what I have here in the numerator, I'm just left with 2a minus 2x all over x times a. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which will give me 1 over x minus a. That's totally fine with me. Now at this point, I still cannot do direct substitution. I can't plug in a for x because that will give me division by 0. So you have to look for some more algebra that you can do. And the algebra here is factoring. That you notice 2a minus 2x is factorable. So if I factor out a 2, that might be your first notion. If you factor out a 2, you'll be left with an a minus x. And that's a good start, but then as soon as you get to this next step, you realize that that's not quite good enough because a minus x is not going to divide out with x minus a because these are not identical. However, notice that they are opposites. So instead, if I go back a step and erase, instead of factoring out a positive 2 up here, let's go ahead and factor out a negative 2. So back it up and factor out a negative 2, then we would essentially be left with a negative a plus x. Again, distribute this in your head and double check your signs that this does work. It gives us 2a minus 2x. And then what I have here, I have negative a plus x, but we realize that negative a plus x is the same as positive x minus a. Those are equivalent, which means that these quantities are the same and they are going to actually divide out. So we're left with the limit as x approaches a of negative 2 over xa. And now we can do direct sub. Substituting in a in place of x gives us negative 2 over a times a, which is negative 2 over a squared. So you realize that we do end up getting the same exact answer that we got using the other method, just with very different algebra. So this hopefully lets you kind of compare these methods side by side and have a better idea of which one you prefer. In general, the one on the right is typically a little bit shorter, a few steps shorter. Uh, the one on the left, in this case, there was a little bit more algebra because the common denominator was more complicated, but it really doesn't matter which method you choose. Just choose one for starters and work on becoming more proficient with that one. And then if you can eventually be proficient with both, that of course is most ideal. I hope that helps.